you, Lord. Give Jesus a hand clap. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Can you stay with me? Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. I don't know. I'm kind of used up, <laughs> but I still got some gas in the tank. Do you? You got some gas in the tank this morning? Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost anointing and energy. Amen? I know there's been a lot of hype about being in the house this week, and that's why I see some of you here, and I believe, you know, maybe there was a, no, there's never more hype than there ought to be. It's Sunday, amen? Amen. It's the day to come together and give Jesus our all, amen, and worship him, hallelujah, to encourage one another and love one another as brothers and sisters, so you can't hype that up enough, can you? Come on. All right, don't get tired on me already. All right? Stop your feet a little bit. I believe that God wants to change every single life in this place. Amen. Some of you, He already has. You know, He's never done changing us. Amen? As long as we're willing, we're a willing vessel. As long as we're surrendered to Him, He is never done changing us, is He? Amen. He's never done. I told you, I told you before that a lot of times I end up living the message the week before, the week of, the Sunday where we come together and this week was no different. I, your families, your, your children have really been on my heart this week. Really big time. I see what's happening around this world. I see some of the, some of the mental issues that, that uh, people are struggling with. I, I see some of the things that, you know, people are having to walk through. And it's been on my heart. And then, you know, all of a sudden this week, something heartbreaking even happened in my own family. You know, so I walk through that, and, and the more that ha I pray for my family, but as I did that, I prayed for your families too. I prayed for your children too. Amen. I pray for each and every one of you also. So my heart is really stirred up yes. for, for our prodigals, our sons and daughters, and, and those that are struggling, those that are confused and just wondering what in the world is happening in this world. And that's why, you know, we need to come in this place every Sunday. Decided in our hearts to, to tear off the roof. Amen. To, to really come in and, and encourage one another. As, as I stomp my feet, I hope I encourage you. As you stomp your feet, I hope you encourage your neighbor. Because that's who Jesus is. He's worth stomping our feet for, man. I've seen, I've seen at games, at football games, where people will act a fool and get up and do everything. But when we come into the house of God, we don't have to sit here. Okay? I know this used to be a quiet church. But it's not a quiet church anymore. This building is meant to make some noise out into the community. Amen? Amen. If, if they don't know the power of God outside these four walls, then what good is it? You know what I'm saying? What good is it? Another thing that breaks my heart is, you know, I was talking to my wife about, many of you don't know, but she has a job and she takes care of older people that are pretty close to their eternity. Many of them with Alzheimer's and, and that sort of thing. Uh, some of them terminal. And she goes in and out and she blesses people. She, she leads them to Christ before they end up, you know, dying the, in the physical body. I'm proud of what she does. She does it for barely nothing. Because she loves to minister to older people. She loves the older folks. But she was telling me about the one that she's 
ministering to now and working with now. And, and this man used to be really popular in his neighborhood. He was somebody in the neighborhood. Everybody wanted to be around this gentleman. Everybody knew his name. Wherever he went, people would say hello and they'd bless him. But he doesn't know Jesus. And now he's lost all of his memory. He can't even remember the, the, the worldly accolades that he has. But he never knew Jesus through all of that. And he's on the doorstep of eternity. And it's, it's people like that, that that really stir me up to, you know, my heart up. There's people like that all over this world. They need to know about Jesus, don't they? They need to know that we're convinced that we'll tear off the roof for them too, amen? That song got me fired up today. I can't help but tear off the roof, amen? That got me fired up this morning. You see, we live in a world with so much information. And there's so much in this world that wants to capture our attention. Like this man, you know, he was ca the world captured his attention. And, and, he, and he was a slave to this world. He was a slave to the money. He was a slave to the fame. But now he's on, he's on the doorstep of eternity. And he's a slave to the enemy. He's, he's about to, to end his life. And, and we don't know where he'll go. But the word says that he probably will end up in a place called hell. Amen. So keep my wife in prayer. Because they're, they're completely kind of anti-God. Because they've hung their hat on this world and not on him. Amen? We're so close. Whether we're 90 years old or whether we're 20 years old, we're so close to our eternity. So close. I was talking this morning, my, my oldest daughter is 38 years old. Well, that makes me kind of getting up there a little bit too and it seemed like just yesterday you know when I was chasing home from, from being old, out in Connecticut to come back and, and see her for the very first dime, time went just like that not to mention the things that we see in this world we need to be convinced of who we are in Christ now Iran is chucking missiles and and drones last night at Israel. We need to pay attention to that, folks. Amen? The Bible says that in the last days that, that His people will be hated. That's what we're seeing over there right now. We're seeing some prophetic things happening over there. But I love what Benjamin Yetanahu, Yetanahu whatever, said. He said, if anybody hurts Israel... We're going to hurt them. <laughs> Amen? Amen. They're not backing down. They're not backing down one bit, folks. We, we need to pledge our allegiance to that country because that's our, our biblical duty. Amen? That's what God yeah. said we're to do. But not only that, we shouldn't back down either. Amen? If somebody wants to come along and, and hurt our children, and folks, there's plenty of that out in this world. You put your kids on a school bus. We need to say it ain't happening here. That's right. I'll tear off the roof. Come on. I'll tear off the roof, okay, to protect them. I'll tear off the roof. Why? Because my faith is in Jesus Christ, okay? He's the author and finisher of my faith and I trust him and I believe him amen you know a lot of times God gives us the ability to, to see him working and he just did this past week we talked about the eclipse and, and just the wonder you know people traveling all over this world people flying into the United States people driving across our country to look and stare up at the sky at the wonder that they see but not even knowing that it's, that it's God that created the wonders in the heaven.
Not even knowing that God said, you know what, I'll show you signs and wonders in the heaven and the earth below. We had an earthquake in New Jersey and nobody recognizes the fact that, you know what, that's the earth below. Maybe God is trying to get your attention a little bit, get you to trust Him, get you to look at Him and give Him some of the attention that you give to this world. Amen? We had a volcano that erupted over in Iceland on the day of the eclipse. Okay? It says that smoke will come billowing, smoke and fire from the earth. Amen? That's what a volcano is, folks. We should pay attention to, to what God is trying to say to us. As, as people of God and as, as, as people in the United States, we need to pay attention to what he's saying to us as a country. Amen? We haven't always paid attention to him. I always tell my wife, because she's not great with directions, unless it's from the Bible, she's really good at that. And she helps to give me directions sometimes too with the help of the Holy Ghost. I'll give credit where credit's due. But sometimes I get nervous about sending her somewhere without me there because she doesn't pay attention to her surroundings. And the United States hasn't really paid attention to our surroundings very well. And some of our families haven't really paid attention to surroundings much. It's time for us to give God our complete attention. Somebody say amen. It's time for us to give our, our lives completely to Jesus. Amen. We are on the cuspus. Whether Jesus comes back, by the way, the title of the message today is, If Jesus Comes Back. I'll tell you something else. He won't change your life today unless you let him. Okay? He won't change your life today unless you let him. So let's pay attention to what he has to say to us. Let's pay attention to what he's saying to us, our families. Amen? Let's, let's look at his clock and not just ours. We're so busy sometimes. This is all we do is pay attention to our own clock. Well, what about God's clock? Amen? What about his clock and, and what he thinks about time? Shouldn't we give him the time of day? Amen? Let's begin to love what he loves a little more. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I looked at somebody this morning. I'll be honest with you. He was driving a boat going to the lake. And I thought, man, you need to come to church yep. instead of going to the lake today. You need to come to church. You need to pay attention to God and what he's trying to say to you. Amen? And then, I, and then I, you know, God says, why don't you just look into his heart? And that's what we need to do as people of God, is we need to have the love of God. If we want to love what, what he loves, and we really have to look into the hearts of people. We need to look into, you know, okay, the problems that each and every person might have, that they're walking through that day. Now this guy's problem was he was going to the lake instead of going into the house of God. But we don't know what he knows. We don't know what he believes and we don't know what he's heard. Amen. But if there was some people that would tear off the roof. If there was some people that would tear off the roof. I don't know about you, but I could cast my line out on the lake there and catch me a big old bass. I remember a few years back, I won the Red Cross tournament. Two, two, of, the, two of the largest fish, fish caught. It was thrilling. But there's nothing more thrilling to, than to be a fisher of men. Uh, amen? There's nothing more thrilling. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed myself worshiping today. And, and I've, I've already got the victory. I don't, I don't even need yeah. to preach the word. I've already got something that I came for today. Amen? I could go home now and be full. It'll last me. Amen? Amen. Revelation 12, 12 
says, For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Now, that time is not referring to this time now, but I see that happening. Amen? The devil has come down and he's wreaking havoc all across this land and people are allowing that to happen. They don't understand what the devil understands in some cases. The devil knows his time is short. Amen? So he's trying to wreak as much havoc in this world as he can. And what should our response be as the church? It ought to be to tear off the roof. Amen? It ought to be to get some excitement into our lives. What should we do? Well, it says in Hebrews, let's keep a firm grip on the promises, not letting go the promises that keep us going. Amen? That's the first thing we should do. He says, he always keeps his word, talking about God. Amen? He keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging and loving one another. Amen? And helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see see the big day approaching. Amen? That's what we should do. That's what we should do. You see, Jesus tells us the kingdom of God will be like tying ten bridesmaids. You've heard me preach it. Come on. Over and over. The kingdom of God. Christian men and women will be like ten bridesmaids. They all go and get a lamp, but only few of them get oil in their lamp. Come on. They all fell asleep, but when the bride, when the groom came, the only ones that were ready were the ones that had oil in their lamps. Come Amen. On. Come on. Amen. There's a lot of soft gospel out there, folks. And it, it actually keeps us from our destiny with Jesus Christ. It keeps us from the joy, the peace, the victory, the love. The love. Amen? We need to make sure our families have oil in their lamps. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I'm, I'm here doing what I do because I want to see you having oil in your lamps. Amen? When the time, when the groom comes, I want you to be ready. Amen? There'll be so many people because of false teachers and a soft gospel that will not be ready when that time comes. If you're part of tearing off the roof, boy, that song really got me today. If you're, if you're tearing off the roof, man, you're storing up some oil in your life. Amen? You're storing up, storing up some oil in your family's life. Amen? They might not be beside you with oil in their lamps, but they're watching you. They're paying attention to what you're doing as you pay attention to what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen? This is a promise for today too, yes. folks. It's a promise for today. It's a promise for you and I. So what do we need to do? We need to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. Amen? Seek his face. Run after Jesus. Tear off the roof. He's playing that tear off the roof in the background. Hallelujah. We serve a living, breathing, promise-keeping God. Somebody say amen. amen. Now wake up. Yeah. Okay, wake up or I'm going to come out there, shake my head and get sweat all over you. Wake up out there. We serve a powerful, living, yes. breathing God. Amen. A promise keeping God. Amen. And he wants to do something great in your life and in your family. Amen. But if we miss him, if we're not paying attention when he's speaking, then we're going to miss it. His plan isn't for the church to go down. His plan isn't for you to perish. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, Mark, I'm going to be preaching out of Mark 1. Mark was, Mark was excited about Jesus. Most of the other gospels went and told about the birth of Jesus and about him growing up, but not Mark. He couldn't wait to get into the meat of what Jesus did in his ministry. He went right to him getting baptized in the Jordan. 
right to his ministry, that, to, his, to his physical ministry in this world. He talked about Jesus being tempted by the devil and fasting for 40 days and the power that came upon him. He talked about the Holy Spirit moving in Jesus. And then he talked about the healings that, that they started to do, see happening out there. And they talked about going and grabbing the, dis, the disciples off of their fishing boats or, or wherever they were. He talked about starting his ministry. And, and, he, and, he, and he told about people getting healed in Capernaum. And, you know, he, he was delivering people. He was casting out demons. He was healing lepers. It was really exciting. You know, people, it was exciting, folks. It, it was exciting. They were excited to see Jesus doing something. Come on. And he couldn't wait to tell about it. And then he, then he says this, he, he, he says where Jesus says, let us go into the next town so that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come. You see, he wasn't meant to stay at any one particular place. He'd been called to go minister all over this world and to heal people, to show them the Father, amen? He didn't come exclusively for the cross. Yes, it's the most important reason he came. But he came to start the church. Amen. He came to bring life to people. And when the church has life, that's when the towns are healed. Somebody say amen. We just prayed for our towns and we had revival services believing that God's going to heal our towns. Well, the church has to have some life in it for that to happen. Amen. Our families are, are, are going to be healed because the church has life. Amen. People will find hope because the church has life. Somebody say amen. Amen. The church has to have that life in them. Life is restored when the church comes alive. So Mark tells us that Jesus shows up a second time in Capernaum. He had left Come on. and he came back. Come again. And everybody knows that he's on his way there. You know what? The word got out. And when he stepped foot into that land, they knew that his presence was there. Yes. Amen. I got to wipe the sweat out of my eyes here. They knew that Jesus was there as soon as he stepped foot out onto that land. And they wanted to get in his presence. Okay? They felt him. They knew he was there. The word was out. And they wanted to get where he was. The word says it was heard that he was in this house. People couldn't, people couldn't keep from telling. Because Jesus had been there before. Jesus had done some amazing things in that place before, in Capernaum. And they remembered, thank you, they remembered what he'd done. People all over the place, they, they put their stuff down, man. They, they left their boat parked in the, in the driveway. I'm sorry if you got a boat and you go so But they left all the things that the world wants to toss at them. All of those things, and they just decided they were going to run to that house. Yes. Because Jesus was there. Come on. Because they wanted a word from him. Because they'd seen what he did the first time that he came. And he's done some amazing things in my life and in your life too. Amen. That we cannot forget. We can't forget that there's power in this room. Amen. Betsy, you've been overseas. You've seen God moving in amazing ways. Amen. We can't forget what we've seen him do. Amen. They stopped everything. They changed their plans. They were determined. They were going to get there. Amen. So the moment that Jesus got into the house, the house got full. Somebody say amen. There was an excitement in the place. I don't know. Maybe they were stomping their feet. Amen. Maybe, maybe they were speaking in tongues. Maybe, maybe, they, were, maybe they were just praying. Amen. But Jesus was in the house and they were excited. There was an atmosphere of love and of healing in that place. And that's why people were attracted to that house. Amen. And that's the same way in the church. If you're struggling in this world, you need to get into the house of God and let people encourage you. Be a part of what Jesus wants to do in the house. We sang a song like that too in the room. Amen. Everyone was shouting, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. 
Jesus is coming back. So everybody was paying attention and they ran there. And I pray that that would be this church. You know what? Jesus is coming back. You can say what you want, but Jesus is coming back. I know what's in the Word. You can deny the Word, but I'm here to tell you today. Why? Because I love you. If I told you anything less, I wouldn't be loving you. Jesus is coming back. Amen. There was an excitement and a zeal, and we need to have that. Tear off the roof. eh? Amen. Because Jesus is coming back. The people jammed that house full. It was full of different needs, different hurts, different addictions. It wasn't any different from, the, from this house. When we get people coming in and out of this house, everybody here has a need. I might know what your need is, but Jesus does. And he can take care of it when you're in the house. Amen. Then Jesus began to preach. They were hungry for a word from Jesus. Is anybody hungry for Jesus today? The words that he spoke are recorded right here in the Bible and they're meant for you and I, amen? When the enemy wants to wreck some things in your life, you can grab on to the word. Don't get too excited about that. So when trouble comes, you got this word stored up in your heart. When trouble comes, you'll have victory over that trouble. Amen. When you pull out the word, when you say, thus says the Lord, you get the peace, you get the victory, even in the midst of your trouble. Amen. Amen. Many people go into church on Sunday and they worship a little bit. They get a little bit of the word. I'm trying to give you a full plate full of the word. Amen. They get a little bit and that's all they want to take out. They go out and they never leave change. They leave the same way. Amen. A little bit isn't going to cut it in this world. Amen. It means you have a little bit of everything in you. Pay attention to me please. Not to what's happening over there. I have no idea what's going on. If you want a little bit of the word, it means you got a little bit of the world in you too, amen. You got a little bit of whatever makes you feel good. You got a little bit of whatever the world wants you to have. Joshua didn't say, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord a little bit, amen. That's not what he said. Jesus didn't say, I'm the way, the truth, and a little bit of life, did he? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and he brought us everlasting life, amen. You see... They knew that in Capernaum. That's why they ran to the house. When Jesus shows up, he brings your peace. Amen. He came to get you home to heaven. Amen. To bring life to you. He wants you to make it. Amen. Amen. We have to get in his presence. We have to be willing to tear off the roof if we have to. So here he was preaching the word and people were glad to hear it. And all of a sudden across town... There was somebody else that wanted to hear his word too. But he couldn't respond to it. He says, my heart wants to run there, but my circumstance won't let me. He was a paralytic and he he was stuck where he was. He had no way to get to the house. He was without hope. That's the way he'd been his whole life. And too many of us, we give in to the circumstances that we find us in that day, amen? We'll say, it's okay. I'm almost all together. Come on now, I I know I'm quoting some of you there. It's not for me anyway. There's There's one or two of you here that are saying, this isn't for me. This is too over the top. I'm not, I can't, this isn't for me. I'm good with this little bit. Some of you are happy with just a little bit, just a teaspoon of the Holy Spirit when He wants to fill your life up. Amen? It's been this way forever. I don't see it changing right now. God made me this way. Oh, that's what many of you tell me. God made me this way. So why should I change now? Or how could I change now? Well, if you think God made you this way, He got so so much better for you than what you think. Amen? Everyone here knows some people like that. They know there's an answer. But they just don't know how to get there. Many people, they're searching 
They're searching for what Jesus was preaching in that house and the things that he was doing in this house, but they just don't know how to get there. But maybe they'll see an answer in you. Come on now. Maybe they'll see an answer in you. Maybe they see a solution in you. Maybe they see something greater in you. It's the Holy Ghost inside of you. Amen. It says, then they came to him. There's a lot of racket out there. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And each grabbed a corner of his bed. You see, this paralytic had four good friends. Come on. They didn't take off and run ahead to get to the house. Amen. They weren't selfish with what they knew they were going to find when they got there. They grabbed their friend that couldn't make his way there and had no way how to get there. And they took him to the house. Hallelujah. These men each had their own reasons to be there, folks. They had their own problems. But they wanted to get their friend to his miracle. They wanted to get their friend to his healing. Oh, don't miss out. Don't let that keep you from hearing what God is saying to you today. Amen. This is how bad we want your life to change. We're willing to tear off the roof. And it ain't an easy job. This is a well-built place. They carried their friend all the way across town only to find the place packed and no way in. These guys were excited to tear off the roof. They're a little ahead of me. But, but when they got there, the door was shut. There was no way to get in. You know, they were stopped short. How many have been stopped short before? Hallelujah, yeah. They were stopped short. But they looked at each other and said, you know what? We're not going to let this stop us. Faith got us here. His grace is going to get us to them. Amen. They went to the roof. If you want to move a God in your life, you want to change in your circumstances, if you want your family saved and set free, be willing to be inconvenienced, folks. Be willing to be used by God. Hallelujah. Lord, use this place. Use this place. Use this house, Lord. Use use your other houses, but use us particularly today. Amen? We have to be willing to carry somebody to Jesus. Someone say amen. Amen. To take some time to show some love. Matthew 25 says this, For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger. Folks, I was a stranger. And you invited me into your house. I was naked and you gave me some clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, folks, you might be the path to somebody's miracle. Amen. You you might be the path to somebody's miracle. If you want to be blessed, look into the hearts of people and be willing to carry people to Jesus. Amen. Be willing to carry somebody, a stranger, somebody naked, somebody that's hungry. Be willing to carry them to Jesus. And when you get there, if the house is full, hallelujah, be willing to tear off the roof for that person. Amen. If you want to be blessed. So here they are, no way in way ahead of me no way in many people when they when they saw that would just pack up and leave you would not you but you over there you'd pack up and leave when you saw the house full no way in you'd say there's no way for me to get in so I'm leaving when you see an obstacle when you get a no you leave disappointed but they, they, didn't, they didn't let that stop them. They were determined. They were not backing down. They were never going back. Amen? Can you imagine the scene in the house? Remember, there was people all around. No room. 
they had to make room for this man that was coming down through the roof. They had to make a spot for him to come down and get into the presence of Jesus. You see, those boys were tearing off the roof. The faith that Jesus saw. Could you imagine that? That blessed him. But think about the other people in that house. Think about the faith they saw and how it, how it would lift up the faith of all the people standing there in the house. Amen. When we're willing to tear off the roof for somebody else and take them to Jesus, people watch, people listen, and their faith is risen up. Amen. When they lowered him down in front of Jesus, it, it must have been dead quiet. And then Jesus said this. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And they said, what? We're expecting something different than your sins are forgiven. This man needs healing. But I don't want you to forget this morning that eternity in heaven is the greatest miracle that we could ever get. Amen. Eternity with Christ in heaven is the greatest miracle miracle that this man could ever get despite the fact that he couldn't walk if he had eternity in heaven we've seen a miracle we've seen life in him amen even if he had no legs we see life in him amen he has eternal life it's the greatest miracle let me tell you something about this this scene right here Matt right there young man his life was at rock bottom you see there's a true story something we can all get here his life was rock bottom addiction all different types of sins in his life didn't know where to turn didn't know where to go and then something even worse happened in his life he thought his life was destroyed he didn't think that there was going to be any way out But let me tell you something about the guys that are standing around Matt right now. These are the same guys that lowered him through the roof are the ones that led him to Christ. Because because of their faith and because their willingness to take the time and talk to Matt and bring him to the house of God and, and disciple him, because of all that, then Matt has a brand new life amen he's been transformed amen God has done miraculous things in his life he no longer has addiction issues hallelujah he'll be married soon amen God flipped the script in his life amen because some people were willing to tear off the roof and get him to Christ and that's how it works We know so many people out there, like Matt, that don't know where to turn. Their life is is, is horrible to them. They don't know where to turn. But we have the answer. And we should be willing to tear off the roof. To tear off the roof. Amen? Amen. Imagine all the different emotions at that moment. The scribes, the religious people, the crowd, everybody there then Jesus breaks the silence and he says arise take up your bed and go to your house amen go ahead arise and take up your bed but leave it here amen that doesn't belong to you anymore none of that stuff belongs to you that we're leaving that at the altar somebody say praise God that's where we leave that's where we leave addictions That's where we leave hurts. That's where we leave hopelessness. That's where we that's where we live on leave unforgiveness. All of those things that Jesus wants to take away from us. And he walked out that day free and able to walk. But most of all, he walked out saved. Amen. He walked out saved. That's how Jesus moves. He changes the circumstances. He shifts the atmosphere. I had trouble keeping your attention 
when that was going on. Why? Because there was something greater going on. Somebody was tearing off the roof to get to Jesus. Amen? Somebody was determined to get to Jesus. You see, they all were amazed and glorified God. They'd never seen anything like this. And folks, we get so used sometimes to seeing and hearing about the amazing things that God does all across this world. I could tell you stories of of being in Africa and being here and being in my own home of wonderful things that the Lord does, but we're so short to remember some of those things sometimes. We're so short. But we're quick to remember the things that we face in this world. We're quick to remember our problems in this world. And we don't tear off the roof to get to Jesus and let him have what it is that he wants to take away. Amen. This man came here on the borrowed faith of his friends. The love of his friends. The bottom line is, it's about love. It's about love. People are motivated by things in their life. I know people motivated by money. I know people motivated by fame. But there's not enough people out there motivated by love. Amen. But if the Holy Spirit resides in us, that love can motivate us. That that love can, can get us to tear off the roof. That love can get us to stomp our feet sometimes. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't, we shouldn't let our comfort zones keep us from being willing to see and be a part of everything that the Lord wants to do in our lives. Amen. We have comfort zones. Tear off the roof of those comfort zones, folks. If there ever was a time, if you're thinking about giving up, if there ever was a time not to give up, it's today, folks. It's today. If you want your family healed, if you want your family whole again, it's not the time to give up. Amen? Amen. If Jesus is coming back, it should change how we view life. It should change how we view this world and how we view people and how we view life. Somebody say amen. It should change those old habits that we got. I'm here pleading with you. Change those habits. Tear off the roof of those habits that keep you from being who God wants you to be. If God is, if Jesus is coming back, it should bring us some confidence, some Holy Ghost boldness. Amen? Amen. You see, here's how this will change your life. When you see somebody with a need, somebody that's carrying a bed around, I pray to God that you never forget the scene of that young man being lowered down through that roof. And I pray that the Lord will convict your heart when you try, when he speaks to you and you try to walk by that situation. I pray that he'll convict your heart. And I know then when you remember that, that you'll go back and say, you know what? It might seem like there's this ceiling over your life, but you can raise the lid in your life. Jesus wants to raise the lid. Could I help you tear the roof off? And I'll say, huh? Like my dog. Huh? Could I help you tear the roof off? That's what Jesus does. Amen. If Jesus is coming back, it should fill our hearts with love. Yes. Amen. It should fill our hearts with compassion. The same compassion that that he has. Amen. If Jesus is coming back, we should be willing to tear off the roof. To get to him at any cost, folks. At any cost. At the cost of your pride. At the cost of forgiveness. At the cost of saying, I'm sorry. At the cost of going to the altar. Which is my favorite spot. Stand with me. 
please. I want to keep your attention. Lord, hallelujah. Pastor Nate and Vicki, can you come over here and stand? Honey, can you come stand with me, Val? Pete, I need a couple of you prayer team people over here. Lord, we need you. We need you more than anything. Lord, we, we come to you now with this great need, this desperate need. You're the only thing that can change the situations that we see. You're the only thing that can change the situations that we feel. Lord, I ask you to tear the roof off of every situation, every problem. Walk through those things with us, Lord. I pray that you'll fire up gifts in this church, in this yes. community, Lord. I pray that you'll fire up attitudes, that, that, that you'll just move like never before, Lord. We've never seen a move of God that can turn this community around. We're expecting and we want to see it now, Lord. We want to tear off the roof of whatever has been coming against you, moving in this area, in our families, in our children, Lord. We're going to take this very seriously now. Let your love move through us, Lord. Let worldly idols drop off from of us, Lord. Let us, let us always look to you for direction. Let us not ignore what you're trying to say to each and every one of us, God. You've got a lot to say. Lord, help us to hear your voice. I pray you'll shut off the voice of this world. Lord, when you're speaking to us, I pray you'll shut off the voice of this world from every person here. Lord, when you want to help us, I pray that we'll be willing to let you help and we'll feel your presence and we'll feel your help, God. Lord, I pray that we, we won't neglect your house, Lord, because how can we tear off the roof of something the enemy has owned so long if we neglect to come into the house of God together. Lord, this is something that we all lift up together. We lift this up together. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, there's a few of you here that need to give your life back to Christ. This is a serious time. You need to give your life back to Christ. There's a place right over here with Pastor Nate and Vicky. As we start to give this altar call, and we're gonna give, we're gonna give a call for a few different things. As we start to give the altar call, I'm gonna ask you to get up and come right down here boldly, without any questions. You're gonna change your life. You're gonna tear off the roof of the things that have held you back and kept you actually from having eternal life with Jesus Christ. We're not guaranteed another day. We're not guaranteed one more minute than the breath we got right now. I'm praying that you're going to respond to Jesus Christ. There's, there's some of you here that need healing in your body. We declared a lot of healing today. I'm going to ask you, don't be shy. When you need when you need healing in your body, when you have sickness, tear off the roof. Don't be afraid to come to the altar. Amen? Pack it out. Go to Jesus. There's people that want to pray with you. There's people that want to lower you down. Lift you up, I should say. Go to Jesus together with love. Love is where it starts, at this altar. Love. Being motivated by love. Some of you 
have been struggling with things in your life. You've been wronged. You, you haven't trusted people. It's, it's, a, it's, it's been a path for you. It's been a path that has a resistance to God. You have unforgiveness. You've struggled with it. You, you, seem to, you seem to overcome it and then it comes right back at you. You need to tear off the roof of unforgiveness and regret. Some of you have regret for some things. You know what? Jesus is not a God of regret. I'll never regret giving him what I've given him. I want you to come all the way down here on the end. If that's you. I don't see anybody moving right now. Now's the time to move, folks. <laughs> Now's the time to move. You need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come over here. Come over here. You need healing in your body. Come right here in the middle. Come right here in the middle. You have trouble with unforgiveness. Go over here. You, you want your prodigals to come home. Come down here, right here. Come right down here. You're praying for salvation in your family. Right over here, Richard. I invited Richard to church today. I believe God wants to touch him today too. Amen. We're going to reach our hands out. Everybody, come on down. Your need. You have a need. You have a need. God wants to touch your need today. God wants to touch your need today. Hallelujah. God, move in this place. Move in this place, Lord. Move in this place, Lord. Thank you for restoration, Lord. You need restoration in your family. Thank you for restoration, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. You've had a spirit. You've had a spirit of discouragement. You don't need to live that way. You can come down to this altar. We want to tear the roof off the spirit of discouragement. Amen. Come on, don't play. Don't play. Listen to God. Listen to what He's telling you right now. If you, if you feel a tugging in your heart, it's